Okay, hi, welcome to the round table. I'm Mr. Sweeney. We have a great show today. Um, first, can our, can our people on the board tell us who you are for today's show? Um, my name is Carson Ahola. Um, yeah. All right, thanks, Carson. Tim Hello, Simpson. Tim, thank you, Tim. Alex Rumley. Alex, how are you, Alex? Good to see everyone. So these are our team of two kids that are doing the show. We usually do this in the studio, but we're going to be doing this online for this for the uh, semester. Guys, thanks for joining me um, via Zoom. So Celtics last night, what do you guys think? It's um, They play tomorrow night. It's a win or go home situation. 11 turnovers in the opening 24 minutes. The lowest first half point total of the playoffs. What do these guys need to do to to uh, pick it up. I mean, they have to really now win, as you know, the next three. Yeah, I mean, it was really sloppy in the first half. Tatum shot 0 for 6, 0 for 4 from 3, and had a few turnovers. And, like, for the fourth quarter, he's kind of just playing, like, me ball, and they don't play any team ball. And they just cause too many turnovers alone and miss too many shots. Yeah, yeah. I had on a Tim. Um, throughout the whole playoffs, fourth quarter's been awful because they're all trying to just huck up threes and be the hero. So they definitely need to start playing more as a team later in the game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that too. I think that's a, it's a problem. Um, very, very sloppy at the end. They kind of tried to pull together um, towards the end. Um, lost by three, but they also had five turnovers in the last, first five minutes of the four. So, you know, if you were a coach, you want them to become a little more uh, focused and kind of get them you know, ready for tomorrow night. What do you guys think? Can they pull this off? Can they do three in a row and, and move on? Uh, I think maybe. they definitely could. But, maybe. I mean, it's going to be tough against – I mean, the Heat are a really good team. Yeah. And they've really shown it. Like, they just have a good young core with Tyler Hero. Like, he had 27 or 37 last night. Yeah, so he really and the Heat's bench goes way deeper than ours, so they can definitely outscore us on the bench, which is a huge reason why we're down in the series because our beach our bench doesn't go very deep. So yeah, yeah. So we got some um, plus or minuses. We'll see tomorrow night. I think it's a eight thirty game tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've really struggled in the pick and roll with Bam out of bio because like Tice just gets burnt, and then when you throw an ends cannon can't play defense for his life and then you get Robert Williams who gets some blocks but like he's just not that great in the pick and roll so yep. Yep. so we will see we'll see tomorrow night 8 30 uh, Celtics the last game we could keep it going we'll see where it goes uh, let's move on to the uh, the Patriots so uh, Patriots are one and one so far this season coming off a well played a tough loss for Seattle on uh, Sunday night we take on the 2-0 Raiders on uh, 1 o'clock on Sunday at home. Uh, what do you guys think so far? I mean, we had an interesting offseason. Um, we were doing the show uh, last year uh, in March uh, when Brady announced <laughs> that he was leaving. and People were like, oh, my God, this is uh, crazy. We've also lost some key defensive players uh, sitting out the season. Uh, so you think this, is this team better or worse than you thought they would be looking at the offseason? Like, what are your impressions of the first two games? Uh, I, I think, think they're definitely better. better than what was expected. I think they're still a playoff contender. And yeah. like Cam's looked really good, both mm -hmm. passing and running. But um, they have a tough matchup this week against the Raiders. So the Raiders just came off a Monday night game beating the Saints. So And the Saints are a good team. So we'll see what happens. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think they played very well against the Seahawks. Mm -hmm. Yep, Carson, what do you, uh, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I was just going to add on what Tim said. People had serious doubts about the offense and some concerns about the defense, too. The defense is core because almost we had no returning linebackers, I think, starting week one from last year. So I think those two things are going to be a concern. But especially in week one, everything proved to go out well. And then it was an unfortunate loss Sunday night. But it was yeah. definitely playing better than they um, than everyone expected. Yeah, they've held it down pretty well, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Yeah, I thought the thoughts did look pretty good so far. I really, I don't know. Like I, I didn't know what to expect. You know, you kept on reading the paper and kept on getting like, okay, this is going to be a totally different team than what we've seen. Um, but they, uh, they look, they look really. Um, you know, I've had it. It's been fun to watch. And um, Cam Newton, 
I almost said Carson. Uh, Cam Newton for the first two games. Carson, maybe someday you will, but right now it's Cam Newton playing for the Patriots. Um, it looks great so far. What do you guys think of Cam Newton? This is the first time yeah. you've ever had a new quarterback in your lifetime, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, he's, I think he has four rushing touchdowns and like over 500 yards through the air. So mm-hmm. he's one of the top passers in the league right now. Yeah, but, uh, surprised me. I mean, the end of the game, it was kind of exactly like the Super Bowl, a one yeah. goal line carry. But uh, I mean, that wasn't the best play to run, I guess, in that situation. They shouldn't have gone shotgun. They should have gone. Didn't even have it. Edelman on the field, and Edelman's probably their best offensive weapon. At the moment, yes, yes, uh, definitely. Um, uh, yeah, it was weird that he did that through the shotgun. I'm not so sure. I mean, he said, you know, I'd, I'd pull the same play again, which you know, I mm-hmm. didn't work, and that's. That's football, right? That's that's uh, why sports are sometimes the greatest thing in the world to watch, and sometimes they're crushing, right? Um, um, I saw something. I forget where it was. I forget it was ESPN or Fox um, Sports, but it said Cam Newton was one of the top rushers in the league out of quarterbacks and running backs. So it's definitely different seeing that um, dual threat offense because with Brady, it was mostly he only passed and couldn't run. So. Right, so we have a totally yeah. different game plan here. Um, Cam Newton um, will move into second place for most career rushing yards by a QB in NFL history this week. I think he only needs like one yard. So the first yeah. play, if he runs, he's he's in second place. Yeah, he's got like 120 right now. But uh, yeah, and it's also very helpful because our running backs really aren't that great. Like so no, yeah. especially uh, James White's at all. Back. James White was out on Sunday night because. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, family. Um, well, it's Rex Burkett. Yeah, it's kind of just irrelevant. Yeah, so uh, that's where uh, we're, when we look at like what the Patriots need to do to win this week. Actually, I do have better rushes from Sony Michelle and uh, Rex Burkhead. Uh, <laughs> Vegas is allowing 4.9 yards per rush right now, so yeah. this could be a week we can see these guys kind of improve those numbers and maybe work on that game. Yeah. It's been very ineffective the first uh, the first week. Um, you know, I'd, I would also look for another great week from Cam Newton. I mean, it looks like he's playing well. looks like he's getting confident. These injuries that we were worried about that might come back or he might be kind of, like, hindered by. Um, you know, it seems like he's getting more and more comfortable playing in New England and kind of doing what he, he needs to do to, uh, to do his best. Yeah, and Edelman looked really good on Sunday. Like, he yeah. had his most yards ever in a game. Yep. And, yeah, uh, yeah uh, passing, uh, passing yards, right? Most no receiving. Players. Edelman has the best receiving. But um, yeah, I think they'll do well in the run this week because the Raiders kind of just like uh, Kamara ran all over them this past Monday night. So, yeah. well, that should be a good game. Um, what else do I have for them here? Um, we also need kind of a strong showing from our defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Derek Carr's offense. I mean, they they can put up um, some good numbers. They uh, Piled up over 150 yards on the ground against um, last, week, oh, last week. Seattle piled up 150 yards on the ground against us. So we have to. Yeah, really- Seattle's a really good team. I mean, to play that well against them, that's just a good sign, I guess, because like yeah. it's that we're gonna. And I don't know how our whole schedule looks, but uh, there's definitely some tough games on there, and it's good to know that we can stay in them. Yeah, I'm surprised we had some like two tough games back to back here. Usually it seems like the Patriots kind of have that like kind of like AFC beginning of season like ease. Yeah. Kind of soft beginning where yeah. we're crushing teams and all of a sudden, you know, which actually I think this is gonna to work to our advantage because usually sometimes we've seen we're beating teams or beating teams and I think sometimes they get that mentality that like, you know, we're we might be better than we actually are. And they play a team and gives them a little struggle and they they have trouble. So we'll see where it goes. Something um, Bills will win the division. I mean, right now they're two and zero, and they look really good with Josh Allen. Yeah, so. Josh Allen is like Stephon Diggs had a great game, much better than he is from last year. Yeah, it was amazing. So we'll see. We'll see what this week brings. Um, we're not going to talk, talk about this guy every week, but I want to bring it up this week because it's our first show. So um, Tom Brady, who we know has um, he's won. washed, but his receivers <laughs> can't catch the ball because he had one ball that he put like perfectly in the back of the end zone and it was dropped and then I think he had another pass to LaShawn McCoy that was dropped 
-hmm. But he also just can't throw the ball over like Yeah, he's got a weak arm players. now. So, yeah, so, he's so, uh, so my question to you guys is, do you think Tom Brady should have stayed a Patriot this season or do you think he should have retired in the offseason? He should have retired. I think, yeah. Yeah, I and mean, like 43 years old, it's tough to do it. But, uh, I mean, he's he's done okay, I guess, but he's really not himself, and I feel like he's just kind of hurting his resume a little bit. Yeah. But uh, I think the Bucks were did not, better not, uh, This weekend looked better, but week one was very bad. Yeah. Rough week. Rough the Bucks week. were a good – a really good passing offense last year. I mean, they had Jameis Winston, but, like, Jameis Winston had 30 touchdowns, but also 30 interceptions. But then he had 5,000 yards, so it's like it's hard to tell what the guy's going to do. But yeah. he had arm strength that could huck it up to their tall receivers, and they'd come down with it. So, Yeah, I personally, I was hoping that after he won that last Super Bowl, he was going to be like, good night, we're good, we're done, and move yeah. on. And it just it just seems like now I'm kind of like, oh, you know, the kind of – the mystique – starts to kind of fall off a little bit. You know, he'll always be, you know, to us the GOAT for bringing us all these championships and all these Super Bowls, but then you get to this kind of like part here where it's like, you know, the end of the end of the line. What yeah, I mean, I think he was just trying to prove that he's not just a system quarterback and that he can do it on his own, but. I, 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 I agree. Think, I think it's too late to I show that. I think he could have done it like game. earlier, but he's yeah. just older now. Like, I, yeah. He's, he's too old to show that he has the skill. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you, Alex, on that too. I think, I think it's uh, you know, maybe four years ago, if he was yep. like, you know, that's it, I can watch me do it on my own. And then he went to a team and actually did it. We'd be like, okay, without Bill, he can still do this. I mean, it's always going to be that question now. I mean, especially if, like, the Patriots become contenders this year, right? There'll always be this, like, question mark of was, you know, Brady, even though he was amazing, but – how amazing was he? What would he have been without Belichick? Yeah. So, um, it's um, it's uh, it's it's a story that we'll we'll kind of follow. We probably won't talk about Tom every week because he's we're, we're doing mostly local sports, but um, and also Gronk. What do you guys think about Gronk coming back? Has he done anything last? Oh, time? he he hasn't done anything. He hasn't seen. Yeah, I haven't. I really, haven't really like, watched him. He's just been blocking. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't even think he's the starter on that team for tight end because they have a young guy, O.J. Howard, mm -hmm. who's probably better than him right now. Yeah. So, you know, that was – Yeah, I could see Brady kind of going. I was like, okay, well, it kind of makes sense. But then when Gronk signed up, I was like, oh, come on. Okay. Yeah, I think they yeah, – Gronk was better off out of the NFL. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think he's uh, – yeah, and he, got, he has so many other things. I mean, Gronk – the persona of Gronk's kind of funny because, you know, we think he's like this big, like, you know, guy, but he's super smart, you know, business-wise. He's never spent any of his money that he made in the NFL. It's all from his um, stuff he makes on endorsements. So you think that he'd be more like, I'm just going to do that part of it and not worry about injury. But, you know, maybe maybe just love the game. I have no idea. But we'll, yeah. there's a thing yeah. we'll have to look at when we kind of go through here. Okay, guys. Uh, we <clears throat> The Bruins coming up uh, here. So we have a week left in this year's season at the NHL. Uh, you know, great series right now with Tampa and Dallas. I know you guys are hockey fans, but they're tied right now. Uh, but the Bruins do have some questions to answer in the offseason. Um, kind of going back to the idea of Brady in, in age, we have uh, Chara, who is a great leader, but do you think he's is it, is it time for him to, to move on as well? Uh, yeah, like I said I earlier so. – He's kind of a fossil, but like he could, <laughs> you wrote thing. he could stay. I mean, like he's just a good captain on the team, I guess. But I mean, defense. Yeah, he could like run the defense. I don't know how much he impacts us and helps us versus a young guy. Yeah, but the yeah, Bruins yeah. really don't draft well. No, they've had a lot of like recent picks where the like three guys after them turn into great players and their guy just ends up doing nothing for them yeah yeah I mean he hasn't he didn't play like he wasn't he hasn't been playing bad but like Tim said he's just old I can maybe see possibly like one more year but he he's just getting too old for it and he's gonna get hurt or something but yeah I mean what I'd like to see happen is um maybe move him into like a management position with the with yeah the yeah I, yeah, I can see that I agree like, you know, I think he worked really well with with Cam, 
you know, in the front office. He's likable. He's a proven leader. The uh, players seem to respect him. The coaches seem to like him. He fits well into the organization. So maybe you, you give him that, you know, that position. And maybe we, we start getting better draft picks and kind of help Sweeney, no relation. We, you know, help him, you know, kind of uh, build, a, build a team. Uh, how about Tory Crew? Do you think he'll return? He, he said that he's uh, not going to take a hometown discount this time. He's going to uh, go for the money, which kind of makes sense. I mean, this is, these are his prime years. Do you think uh, he will return? And I think it'd be a big bonus if he did return, but mm-hmm. I, I'm not quite <laughs> sure what it, he'll end up doing. Right. But the hope yeah, is that about. he will come back. Mm-hmm. Anyone else with that? Um, yeah, uh, is his contract up? Sorry, I haven't really been following. I think I think it is. I think it is. I think this is a this yeah. is a, a contract year that he can um, he can either uh, he can go into free agency. I believe he's been a very good player the past couple of years. He's definitely he's been a huge contribution to the team. But so I'm sure it would be nice to get him back. But I'm sure um, some other team might offer him better money. Yeah, I agree with Carson. Yeah, and tell you, I think that's what's going to probably happen as well. I think this could be the, the last game we saw uh, with them playing. And, um, you know, so we'll see. The, the uh, season's going to start up, I believe, uh, right in December. So the uh, training camp will start up in November, right around the 15th, I believe, what I read yesterday. And then uh, December, they will be, um, they'll be uh, starting back up and, I think December 1st or 2nd is his opening day. So a very short window right now for these guys uh, to be playing. But they say they're going to do a full season. They're going to do 82 games. So we'll, we'll see uh, how that goes um, with what we're doing. So what do you guys think about, like, uh, we've, we've talked about football and hockey. We've, as you guys have been watching these sports, what do you guys think about? What's been the best sport to watch on TV since, you know, we, we know that they're, you know, obviously. Definitely the NBA. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, I'm gonna have just, to agree. Have I think it fans. looks the best. In the, the fans, situation. the players are just like playing their best basketball, and yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. It's just the way like, they're the NHL was sloppy because like it's hard to pick up hockey like right off the bat and go in there because fans are such a big impact on the game. Yeah. True. Like yeah, the, some of the best teams just look average out there when they were playing. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think they're playing amazing in the yeah. regular season, and then once COVID hit, and then yeah. everyone thought they're going to be great, and then they dropped like three seeds in the playoffs to four or five, and they were number one. Yeah, no, you definitely made a big thing. Um, I think even like even like talking about television wise, I think that basketball and hockey probably look the best too. Yeah, the way they're yep. broadcasting basketball with the fans and the they're just filling up the space nicely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, looks it looks good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like uh, I like how hockey's kind of set up with the, the big screens that are for people for homes. It kind of gives you the idea like you're kind of there. Um, and I know uh, baseball, and we're not going to talk about the Red Sox, so that's just that's – The NFL's been good. I mean, Yeah, I like, think the no, NFL's been good too. I mean, I like the camera works have been a little different. They're more focusing on the field. But when you see a stadium, like some stadiums have people in them, and it mm-hmm. doesn't, doesn't look that bad. Yeah. Like they they didn't have training camp or um, the preseason, so we saw a ton of injuries this past weekend. There were like seven guys. Yeah, the yeah. I was talking to my dad about that. He was like, "Why is everyone getting hurt?" And yeah. they were just talking about like they haven't they just, they also crammed training camp in in like four weeks. Usually it's over right. like four or five months. Right. So definitely they could have gone injured in camp and just hurt themselves even more. Right. Right. So uh, for our final part here, we're talking about uh, fantasy football. So how are these injuries going to affect fantasy football this week? Like, who do you uh, – who are your picks this week, and uh, who will you be uh, sitting this week? Uh, well, they got three – there's three first-rounders who are out right now. Mike Thomas, he's done for two to four weeks. Christian McCaffrey's out four to six weeks. Saquon's done for the year. Then there's guys like Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton's out for the year. Garoppolo has some sort of injury, but he's supposed to be back. Raheem Mostert, uh, yeah. he has like a minor MCL sprain. There's just been a lot of like ankle injuries and yeah. 
guys are missing time. But uh, I think Kittle's supposed to come back, and I think Garoppolo yeah. was too. But I think they might hold him out a little bit longer just to be safe. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. But um, uh, after this weekend, looking at points, I definitely if you have Deck Prescott, I definitely put him in. If you haven't, I'm sure you do. But like forty points, um. It was crazy. And then Cam Newton, if you um, – I'm not sure how he'll play this week, but he had 37 fantasy points, which is a lot. So I would also put him probably closer to the top. Um, ben Roethlisberger has been playing really well in fantasy. He's had two th- uh, two weeks in a row where he's 30-plus. He's been looking really good. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, any uh, any final thoughts, guys? What do you think? Uh, so let's do predictions. You think? Uh, how do you think the uh, Patriots will do this week? Uh, I honestly think they'll lose, but uh, I think it'll be a good game. Mm-hmm. I think they'll lose yeah. by. Yeah, I think they'll play well. I think I it'll. Think it'll I think it'll come down pretty close if they do lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it'll come down to what happened in Seattle. I think they'll lose too. The Raiders' offense has just been playing really well, especially against the Saints. They played really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll see. I like about this too because before it was always like, oh, on the show, it was always like, oh, we're going to win, oh, we're going to win. I like how you guys are kind of like thinking about this objectively and being like, you know, this might not be their week. Things they need to work on. Uh, how about that that Celtics game? I know it's the uh, winner, go home, but will they be? I think they again, pull or? out game five. I I think they will. I think the Heat might get a little, like, uh, I guess, like, comfortable in the first half and mm-hmm. not come out hot. And the Celtics will be because they'll have a chip on their shoulder to win. So Yeah, yeah and, like, just clean it up. I mean, I, <clears throat> I forget what the score was. I think it was 112 to 109. It was close. Last yeah. night. And if you're having 19 turnovers a game and it's a three-point game, you're not – you're not – like, you have an easy chance to win. So, I'd just say clean it up, stop playing hero ball, play more as a team, especially in the fourth quarter, and just take smarter shots and you're hopefully back in it. You never know. Yep. Uh, Alex, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with Carson. Carson summed it up well. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys, that's our show for the week. We, this was excellent. First show. Um, we'll see you guys next week at the round table. Thank you, Tim, Alex, and Carson. You guys did a great job. And we'll see you guys next week at home.